Hello, and welcome to this video tutorial on best practices while using Kismet in the Unreal Development Kit. My name is John Brady, and I am a level designer as part of Cohort 16 at the Guildhall at SMU. The version we are working in is UDK May 2011. Today's date is June 5, 2011. Kismet is UDK's scripting tool. It provides an easy-to-understand interface for scripting without ever having to type in a single line of code. However, like scripting, Kismet follows a logical flow and is subject to human error. These best practices will help you minimize risk for the first time, as well as help long-term users of UDK build an easier-to-read workspace. The first best practice is prior planning. Prior planning can be as simple as a pen and paper sketch or using a Microsoft Visio flowchart to help organize your thoughts. Our example today will be toggling a set of alternating lights on and off. This Visio chart helps us organize the logic of our sequence. As you can see, the sequence is broken up into three sections. Is the sequence currently running? The countdown loop, as well as the actual action of toggling the lights on and off. With this flowchart in hand, it is easy to tr transition into Kismet to script our event. Minimize this, go into Kismet. As you can see, I've taken the liberty of building our level already with two alternating uh, lights in this case. They're both toggleable, as you can see the train, um, and two different colors. So if we play from here, I can demonstrate this map will do. As you can see, there's a countdown to the left, and then the light changes color. And I can do that again, and it will change back. I can continue doing this until I get bored. To open up Kismet, go up to the green uh, K up here along the top. It's going to say Open Unreal Kismet. Um, there's a little arrow on it, and it's hard to miss. And then you click that. And it's going to open. As you can see, here's our logical flow of what happens. You can see our two light references here. Um, but anytime you open Kismet, after you add a few sequences, actions, or events, um, it can get pretty messy pretty quickly. Our second and third best practice work together. Our second is a left to right and top to top to bottom uh, workflow, similar to reading a book. After <laughs> as well as working on a grid. While Kismet doesn't have a grid associated with it, we can superimpose one. So if we kind of just assume that there are lines the way a novel would have them, we can place our events along these lines so that it's easier to read for all of us. Because the trigger is the first thing you have to do to organize it, I'm going to move it above. Move items by holding down the control button and left clicking that item. Um, otherwise, if I just left click, it's going to move the camera. Okay, so I'm going to have a sort of grid here. Um, I'm going to want to move this subtraction integer here because of its large leap and several connections. So put it above because that leap has to continue. So I'm really interested in this connector here, and I want to minimize stuff confuse, uh, confusing each other. Okay, I can move this up here because it only affects the subtraction int. Uh, this toggle is for the lights only, so I'll move that and the lights together somewhere else. Because this has a long arrow back to the false since it's one of the last things that occurs, I'll move it further to the bottom. Um, because I only want one light open at the beginning, I have a beginning of level toggle. Move these two together. Oop, excuse me. Hold control. Move them together so that they're right here on their own separate place. Two lights. Have it there. Great. Our fourth best practice is the use of comments and comment boxes. Comments are a great organizational tool and are especially useful if there's more than one person working in a file. To add a comment directly to a node, simply click the node and then in the object comment, type in the comment. In this case, the Boolean checks to see if the sequence is running. Is running. I hit enter and it pops up right where I want it to be above that no. So every time the sequence is running, the boolean changes to true, and therefore if I hit the trigger again, I can't um, restart the sequence. When it is finished, the boolean changes back to false via this boolean toggle there. Additionally, if I want to add comments to multiple things, in this case, the beginning of the level turns off this light, I can actually move the light a little bit closer, select the three items I want, and either hit um, right click and add new comment here, or, excuse me, hit the C button for a new comment. And this is beginning 
of level turn off light. And it builds me a square around this, which is actually sizable to what you want, and movable if I hit control again, just like the objects are in the place in the workspace. Make sure to comment everything that you want. So this is pretty much, let's see, the countdown sequence is here. And I can control all of these and put those together. C, countdown. This is a subtraction of our countdown. And I think you get the picture. But it's really helpful and easy once someone would come in and look at my Kismet to know exactly what's going to be happening. Um, our fifth best practice is to disappear unused connections. This helps slow by el eliminating unnecessary clutter. In this case, because I have a lot of options going on in my beginning of level, I can disappear these unused nodes and save some space. Do that by right-clicking the node and clicking Hide Unused Connectors. As you can see, this greatly reduces the space on my screen it makes it a little bit easier for me to work among this. I can actually move the light and decrease the size of this box a little bit. Great. If at any point I need to get a connector that's gone, that I've disappeared for flow reasons earlier, you can always right click and show all connectors. So you never really eliminate them. It's actually really helpful um, to hide them in order to save space, but you don't have to redo it. Lastly, beware of copy and paste. It's a great tool, but as you can see, it copies and pastes everything associated with it. In this case, I'm going to copy and paste this compare tool. Control C, and then I control V. It copies and pastes everything associated with it, every arrow, and it assumes you're basically still working with this exact same piece. Now I can alt click the connections to delete them. In this case, I still have a delay associated with it. Ugh, and I'm difficulty getting that off. So in most cases, it's in your best interest to simply right-click, add a new action, a math per se, like an or miscellaneous, um, add an action using the right-click and selecting exactly what you want. Well. My name is John Brady. That's all I have for best practices in Kismet. But if you'd like any additional information or help using other Kismet commands, make sure to check out the Guild Hall at SMU uh, YouTube channel um, for other Kismet and UDK related tutorials. Thank you.